All right, I'm thinking this is going to be a little shorter than usual. It was a Thanksgiving episode, and they were kind of on autopilot a little bit this week. Not that this was a bad show, but you could tell they knew not as many people were going to be watching, probably. And some of the storylines were kind of treading water, and we got a pretty long main event, like almost 20 minutes, which does not happen very often because there's usually a lot of other stuff going on. And then there was the knockouts match. And I'm going to save that for last because I got a few things to say about that one. Most of the show was solid, if not really newsworthy. The opening segment was very good. You know, Kurt Angle comes out and explains himself, says he's the one who attacked James Storm. Storm comes out and confronts him, and they set up the main event. Absolutely loving James Storm right now. And this continued the recent trend of much improved opening segments. I think this one went about eight minutes. And ever since Pritchard took over creative, the changes made to these beginning segments have been such a huge improvement. And in turn, they make the rest of the show better. You know, where Russo would just have Immortal talking and talking and talking and talking about absolutely nothing for like 20 minutes to a half an hour, Pritchard keeps these segments really tight and concise, and generally they get a lot more accomplished in a lot less time, which gives them more time to work with. <laughs> The main event was set up perfectly well in this segment with that big brawl between the two teams. Unfortunately, they felt the need to do the exact same thing later in the night, which felt pretty redundant. You know, they have the brawl, the match is set, but then Jeff Jarrett comes out later on, he calls out Jeff Hardy again, and then there's another big multi-man brawl. That was not necessary, and it was obviously done just for the sake of doing an obligatory Jeff Jarrett promo, because God forbid they don't find a way to squeeze that in somehow. You people are couldn't you have just done something with Austin Aries in this segment? I mean, the stuff with Jarrett is really overdone at this point. If you're going to continue to trot him out there, at least give him something new to say. Don't just have him repeat essentially the same promo over and over again. It's getting really old. This whole show is ridiculous! That aside, the match all this set up was a lot of fun, even if it was an obvious Survivor Series knockoff. RVD coming out to James Storm's music put a big smile on my face, as did Van Dam getting pinned by Christopher Daniels. I love that. And they ended with Bobby Roode standing over AJ. That was fine high for final resolution, so this was good. The Jarrett segment wasn't needed, but this was good. They did a tag title rematch with Crimson and Matt Morgan versus Mexican America. Not a whole lot to say about this. It was pretty much just Hernandez and Anarchia getting their asses kicked, and after their freaking horrible title reign, I enjoyed watching that. This was pretty cathartic. So now they've had their rematch. They lost again, as they should. Hopefully, that'll be the last time we see those two clowns. But of course, it wouldn't be a Thanksgiving impact without the turkey suit. And of all the weird traditions that Pritchard could have done away with, somehow the annual turkey suit gimmick makes the cut? Really? At least they didn't stick someone talented in it this year. I mean, this time they had the good sense to use it to make Rob Terry look stupid. Eric Young and Robbie E. have another match. Ha-ha! It's two or three minutes of sleep-inducing action, and then Eric wins. And apparently Robbie was, like, unconscious after that pile driver because he was selling that thing for a long time. So he was out, so they made Rob Terry wear the turkey suit, and the heels look like total jackasses. This was a complete waste of time. I will admit, I got a chuckle out of the turkey suit video, and Rob Terry wearing it was kind of funny. But the match was a throwaway. Robbie is still delivering absolutely nothing in the ring. His facial expressions are so damn cartoonish. And the TV title, which should be used to prepare rising stars for the main events, is nothing more than a worthless prop for two comic relief idiots. What. A. Joke. This whole show violates everything about my journalistic integrity! And before you ask, I have no idea what the deal with Rudy Charles was either. Maybe he's going to be Eric Young's Ralphus now. I don't know. Then there was the knockout stuff. And this is how you knew it was a holiday. When they stuck six knockouts in lingerie, you knew they were desperate to get people to tune in. And hey, I appreciate beautiful women in lingerie as much as the next guy. And for the record, I thought Winter looked the best. I just didn't like that they did this. You know, stuff like this completely goes against everything the knockout division originally stood for. And to their credit, they did take that into account. I mean, the whole point was Karen was forcing them into this and they wanted no part of it. And all things considered, I was pleased with how tastefully it was done. They actually spent a good deal of time setting this up. 
then Karen makes the match, the baby faces are outraged, they do all these backstage interviews where the faces vent about how this is offensive to them and they're athletes and they don't want to be seen as sex objects, and they show Mickey being pissed off about it, she confronts Gail and calls her a hypocrite for going along with this, and they fight, and blah blah blah. And I was actually impressed with all the pains they took to cover their bases on this one. I mean, they made it clear in no uncertain terms that this was something the women found degrading and Karen was a heartless, mean-spirited bitch for making them do it. So, ultimately, management got their eye candy lingerie match to pop the rating, but it didn't feel gratuitous. You know, it was about as tasteful as something like this can be, so I think they got away with this one. But, in their efforts to set this up, there was one really huge misstep. And where this really got funny, and where it really got sad at the same time, was, you guessed it, Velvet Sky's reaction. With most of the women in this match, you can see why they'd be pissed off. I mean, Tara has always tried to be viewed as an athlete first, as a real competitor. You know, like she said, she left WWE to get away from that stuff and came to TNA because she thought things were different there. And hell, Tessmacher too. And she was someone who started out as blatant eye candy, but she worked really hard to shed that perception and prove that she actually cared about being taken seriously as a wrestler. But whose reaction do they focus on more than anyone's? Which participant is more outraged than all the others by this? Velvet Sky. The one woman in this match who has absolutely no argument against it. The one woman in this match who should not be saying a fucking word. At least Tara's disgust about this felt genuine. But to have Velvet being the one you focus on as being the most pissed off about being in an eye candy match when she built her entire career in this company on being eye candy? Oh, what a bunch of bull****. This is a woman who literally had an eye candy gimmick for like three and a half years. That was the beautiful people's whole shtick. We're eye candy and we're more beautiful than you. That's how Velvet got over in the first place. She used to enjoy parading around like a sex object and throwing it in people's faces. But now, now that she's a baby face, now that the evil Karen Jarrett is forcing her to do this, even though Velvet rubs her crotch along the ring ropes as part of her normal entrance, even though Velvet apparently has a closet full of lingerie backstage just waiting to be used, now she finds this offensive. Now this is insulting to her. Bullshit. Velvet being so appalled by this made her look like an even bigger hypocrite than she already was. Don't act like you find this reprehensible, Velvet. It's just embarrassing. Will you sit down and quit making a fool out of yourself? Tara, Tessmacher, Winter, they can be disgusted by this and you can buy into it. But Velvet? Shut your trap and go put on the lingerie. The match was okay. You're probably better than you'd expect a match with Thong in the title to be. But there was one really funny part where Winter and Tessmacher were trying to whip each other into the ropes, but something went wrong and they were just sort of twirling around in a circle. <laughs> and of course, Madison Rain had to go for her weak-ass finisher, and I really wish she would stop with this because, I swear, she can barely apply that thing at the best of times, and it never, never looks good. It's so bad. Other than that, the match was passable, but after seeing it, I'm not really sure what the big deal was with the lingerie. And for the most part, the women weren't showing any more skin than they usually do. In fact, some of them were actually covered up more than they would be with their normal wrestling gear. And Karen even said that after the match. Half of you are more covered up now than you normally are. I can't believe I'm actually agreeing with Karen Jarrett on something, but she's right. It's not like they were dressed overly trashy or anything. I mean, first, Velvet's all outraged about being seen as eye candy when she really has no right to take issue with it because she never had any problem with being eye candy in the past. But then she gets to cover up more than she usually does, and she's still pissed off about being supposedly objectified. Make up your damn mind, woman. I was a war correspondent, and now I'm covering this. And I think I went on about that a little bit longer than I intended to, so I'm going to end it there. For a holiday episode, this was perfectly fine. You could tell they were just trying to have some fun with this one, and frankly, they've done much stupider stuff than anything that happened here. Remember a couple years ago when they had the Angles dress up like pilgrims? The Velvet Sky stuff is absolutely ludicrous, but any show that goes out of its way to humiliate Robbie E. and Rob Terry can't be all bad. So, happy Turkey Day, everybody. Go eat some leftovers. I'll see you guys later.